So time to address another good question. And this one has to do with choosing the right HPLC column. Okay, that is the single most difficult question in the world. How do I choose the right HPLC column? But let me give you a really simple approach to finding the right column for you. If you walk into a HPLC application, the first thing you'll notice is there's a lot of conditions that need to be set properly. You need to have the right column length, diameter, particle size, uh, stationary phase, flow rate, temperature, you know, column, uh, you know, uh, uh, dimensions. Um, all these have to be set properly. So when you walk into HPLC, this can sound confusing, can sound overwhelming. But let me give you a, a trick. First of all, we're talking HPLC method development. It's considered to be the most complex topic that, that we have in the chromatography world, but it's a lot simpler than people think. So let me go over my simple rules, simple steps to HPLC method development. Step one, look in a column catalog. I know it sounds like I'm cheating here and that I'm, I'm nope, nope, this is the best, the best thing to do. Um, I carry, I, I keep collecting my paper catalogs because I'm old fashioned. You can do this on websites as well, but let me show you an example. I have my Agilent catalog here. Uh, I keep, I've got my Waters catalog, my Phenomenix catalog, they're, they're all on the shelves. Um, so in the back of every catalog, you're gonna find a section that is called the compound index. And in this compound index, this is a list of every chemical that they have separated in this one catalog. There we go, look at, look at. So hundreds and hundreds and thousands of applications. You find the application you want and you turn to the page. And when you turn to the page, on that page, it's going to give you the application. Um, it's gonna give you the column length, the diameter, the film thickness, the stationary phase, the temperature, the flows, everything has been done for you. There are thousands, tens of thousands of applications out there. So step one, what I teach people is, if you're trying to separate benzene, toluene, xylene, don't run to the lab and start injecting them, run to the catalog, look up benzene, toluene, xylene, let's see what's already been done. Now, a lot of times you'll find a chromatogram that will be um, uh, more complex than you really care about. You'll see something like this with you know 75 peaks. Now, if you look at this and say, gosh, I, uh, I only have three peaks, I don't have 75, well, this is a great starting point. And then we'll go to optimization. Then we'll make it shorter, we'll cut out some time. So step one, you gotta find the right column. Look in a column catalog. It's gonna give you the best, it's gonna give you a guaranteed result. Okay, let's say you don't have a column catalog, or let's say your chemical's not in one, and let's say you know, you're know you sitting there saying, well, gee, Lee, if I knew all that, I wouldn't be asking you for advice. So that's a valid, valid point. So let me take you to the next step. Um, in HPLC, there is, uh, we have dozens of columns out there, but there's one column that dominates. If you look at, of all the column sales, about 85% of column sales are reverse phase columns. Why is that? To me, that means 85% of the problems must be solved by reverse phase. So when you enter HPLC, I assume you're gonna be doing reverse phase. Not everybody, 15% will not be, but let's just play the odds. You're probably gonna do reverse phase, so what you wanna do is choose one really good reverse phase column. So what you wanna do is, is buy the best base deactivated C18 you can get. C18 is gonna be your most useful reverse phase column. Um, there's lots of them out there. There's, there's dozens of, of C18s out there. What you wanna find is the most modern HPLC uh, column. So here's a, a, a weird thing. When you look in the catalog, they're gonna list their oldest columns and their newest columns. And the catalogs won't really tell you that the old columns are lousy. I mean, there's that catalog, I hate to say, is filled with lousy columns. That doesn't mean Agile makes lousy columns, it means that there's old fashioned columns that they still make for old fashioned applications. If you're starting a new application, you wanna start with today's best technology. So my favorite column, the Eclipse Plus, uh, made by uh, Zorbax, made by Agilent. Um, they're also, they, they have their SB C18, is also fantastic, that's their number one selling column. I personally like the Eclipse Plus. Uh, but uh, uh, I won't limit it to my Agilent friends. Waters makes a couple of great columns. Um, Waters Sunfire, beautiful column, beautiful C18, good base deactivated column. Um, they also make one called X Bridge, different technology, different, uh, very high pH stable, uh, excellent column. Um, my friends at Phenomenix make a column called the Luna C18, the number one selling silica in the world. There's a newer version of it called the Gemini C18. I don't like the cute names, but I like the column. Gemini C18 is the latest and greatest out of Phenomenix. So, there's lots, and I, I, I feel bad for all the companies I did not mention. There's other great ones out there, but you start with a good base deactivated C18 column. My next piece of advice is you buy a column with the most efficiency you can get. 
you probably haven't defined efficiency yet. Come back to one of my lectures and I'll define efficiency for you. But um, uh, it's a measure of the skinniness of the peak. So when you're entering method development, I have no idea how much efficiency I need. So let's start with the longest column, the column with the most efficiency. And if that works and I have empty, empty space, I could go to a shorter column to save time. Uh, but if I start with a short column, it may not work and then I would have to go to long column. So in other words, start with a really long, really high efficiency base to activate a C18. In my world, that would be a 10 centimeter, 1.8 micron or 15 centimeter, 3.5 micron or 25 centimeter, 5 micron, old fashioned. Um, but any of those, those are our brute force columns. So good C18, base to activate a C18, uh, high efficiency column, start with that. That one column will handle, I would say, most of the applications out there in the reverse phase world. So there's your go-to for choosing the right column in HPLC.